Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, when you give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Raha, Rokak, Wadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that are continually rule very well, that's feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Shalom to the hopeful elect that's uh, plowing in his work, that's uh, laboring to enter into the rest that we long for in our faith, truth, and sincerity. Shalom. Now, uh, the topic of this video is going to be entitled "A Pluribus Unum," all right, which is a Latin phrase that is uh, used in um in this society in America, and that Latin phrase is uh translated into the, uh, the English as. Uh, out of many, one. All right, in which, you know, you're going to uh, the breakdown of that phrase. You know that e at the beginning of that phrase means uh, out. All right, and um, pluribus, which uh, that's where you get um, that word. Pluribus means uh, many, right? Because if you uh, even in, in the English language. Uh, they have uh, a word that's uh, plural, right? You know, you have a, a plural plural noun or, you know, the way you modify your sentence in the English language, you use uh, a plural. Sometimes it's uh, something is singular. Sometimes something is plural. So the pluribus means uh, many, right? And uh, unum means uh, one, all right, which... Uh, that's where you get the, the number in Spanish, which is uh, uno, which means uh, one. So, like the phrase is uh, is translated into, it's uh, out of many one. All right. And the reason why this, uh, this phrase is used a lot, especially... Um, in the um you know the the money system you know they put in coins you see it on your dollar bill the reason they use this is because uh what's like it is because that's meets the agenda of the uh the bankers which uh It's the so-called white man, which uh, goes back to the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, so on and so forth, in which their true biblical nationality is Esau. All right, or they are of the nation of Edom. And their agenda is to bring all nations and all peoples and making them into, uh, into one people. Which is uh, indicative of the Tower of Babel, okay? In which the Tower of Babel, if you go into it, you know you had people that were speaking one language, one speech, all right, and they uh, came together as one people, and the Lord confounded their languages so they didn't understand one another, and that's about the time to where uh, the Lord divided the nations alright because everyone that that uh, that were there after the Lord confounded their languages that's why they separated and they went into their own land alright and that's how the Lord uh, separated and divided the nations alright so they have their own inheritance Everyone that uh, has their own land to themselves, all right, and that's how it was set up from the beginning. But in today's world, you have uh, Esau or Edom that heaps unto himself different nations and different people, and are making them into one people. Because Esau really his ultimate goal is to have control over every single thing and every single person that's on the planet Earth. All right. 
And if he has to use force to do that, he'll do it. All right, that's why this man is uh, is known as the thief. All right, because scripture's going to uh, if the thief would have broken in to steal, would he have stolen until he had enough? Because this this devil, the so-called white man, he you know he completely steals everything, and and he's not satisfied with what he has. You know, he has to uh, take more and more and more, and until the earth is completely ran dry. All right, but in the time to come when this devil is taken down out of power the Lord is going to set it back or take it back to the way it was before alright he's going to the, the, the times that we're coming into is when our Lord established the kingdom that's when these other nations are going to have their own lands alright they have their own inheritance but the um the catch is, is that Edom is not going to have anything. All right. They're not going to have no land, no inheritance, nothing, man. All right. Even the land that they used to have back in the ancient world that was uh, south of Judah, they're not going to own that anymore. Mount Seir, all right, which is known as uh, the Caucasus Mountains, that's not going to belong to them anymore, man. All right. They're going to have no place to go. They're going to be in continual uh, employment. Or uh, in other words, slavery Until that time of slavery is up And once that time of slavery is up You know, since they have no place to go back to Then, you know They're going to be completely done away with Alright, you can find that in the book of Obadiah In the scriptures Alright But I'm going to go ahead and uh, Jump into the precepts uh, It's the book of uh, Deuteronomy The 32nd chapter In the 8th uh, verse, it says When, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel because the nation of Israel once had their own land all right and oh yeah it contrary to popular belief those so-called gutter rats those so-called Jews which are uh, gutter rats by the way that's not their land man all right those are uh, Amalekites of the nation of Edom Okay, because everything that they've done up to this point in time right now has been filled with nothing but war, commotions. Oh, and by the way, another another thing that leads you to that uh, that fact is that they even made it to where they have a city that's set aside in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, and they called the city uh, Pink City, which is uh dedicated to homosexuals you know freaks faggots lesbians so you already know that um that those gutter rats man those those aren't the, the jews man all right the real jews are scattered throughout the entire planet earth according to the curses because we disobey the lost as commandments of the heavenly father if if the the people of israel were set back in that in that land today, then there, there should be no wars whatsoever, and our Lord Yahusha would have been already exalted on the planet Earth. But that's not that's it, that hasn't happened yet. All right. So it leads that leads to uh, a regular person that has some sort of common sense to ask the question, you know, who who is occupying that land today, and it will lead you to the answer, which is Esau. All right. But the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, man. All right, they had their own inheritance, their own land. All right. But what this devil has done, he has uh, taken those lands, all right, and um, given them other names. All right, that's why you have uh, a continent called uh, Africa, right? It was named after uh, a Roman general during the, uh, the Punic Wars. All right, because you had a series of wars and they were called the Punic Wars, right? And um, it was named after a Roman general by the name of uh, Leo Scipio Africanus, all right? And then you had uh, another land or region named Asia, right? Which is uh, named after Asiaticus, which is another uh, uh, Edomite, 
All right. And then you have have America that's here, which is named after Amer Amerigo Vespucci. All right. Who was uh, contemporaries with uh, Christopher Columbus. Another devil, another Edomite. All right. So you have these these different lands is named after these Edomites. Right. In which. Uh, let me see if I can grab that real quick. Uh, now that I mentioned it. Uh, this is Psalms, the 49th chapter and 11th verse. It says uh, the inward thought is that the houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. See, and this scripture is talking about the Edomites, so-called white men, and they have called these uh, lands after their own names. All right. Because after these Edomites have conquered uh, a specific region or land, they name it after their own name. All right. And that's a form of removing an old landmark in which the Lord uh, has, has made it a commandment to not remove the old landmark. Let me go ahead and get it real quick. All right. And this, and this pertains onto, onto our people, right. In the law in which these devils have took the law upon themselves, man. All right. I'm going to get that in a little bit. I'm going to show you uh, that. I'm going to show you an example. Or I'm going to show you that the, the, the evidence that these devils have taken that, uh, this law upon themselves. Actually, there's two scriptures on that. Uh, I'm going to get them in a second. But uh, this Deuteronomy, the 19th chapter, in the 14th verse, it says, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord, Yahweh Bashimel Shai, thy power giveth thee to possess it. See? So you're not supposed to remove the old landmark, and that's exactly what these devils have done. All right? They removed the old landmarks, you know, the the the, the lands that the Lord has given to uh, the nation of Israel, because the nation of Israel had their own land. You had Judah, the tribe of Judah had their land. Um, Issachar, you had Benjamin, they had their own land. So they all had their different lands in that same area. But also, too, you had uh, Edom that was below, below Judah. You had um, Moab, the land of Moab, the land of Ammon. You know, you had these different nations that had their own inheritance. You know, you had the land, uh, land of Ishmael, even the land of uh, Ham. All right. And that's what it, that, that place, which is known as Africa today, was known as before. They were, it was known as the land of Ham. All right. But now it's called Africa today. After, like, like, again, like I said before, like... Um, named after um, an Edomite, an Edomite general. Okay. But um, going down is the book of Proverbs, uh, the 23rd chapter in the 10th verse. It says, uh, remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. See? And that's exactly what Esau has done. He's entered into the fields of the fathers because they, they've taken that land and possessed it, right? And they called it their own now, man. Now they call themselves Israelis. All right, call himself uh, Jewish. All right, so they removed the old landmark and they they entered to the fields of the fatherless. And who is the fatherless? It's talking about us, the nation of Israel. All right, we're the widows, man. We're the fatherless. All right, and that's exactly what they've done. So this scripture applies to these devils, man. All right, and I'm gonna show you, like I mentioned before, about them taking the law upon themselves. Right, uh, let me go to the book of uh, Psalms. The uh, 51st chapter. Uh, Slakia. Uh, the 50th chapter. Slakia. Uh, verse 16. It says, But unto the wicked, the Most High saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, and that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? All right. And the wicked today is known as the so called white man. All right, that's that's the wicked that the Bible speaks of. That's the devil. Also the devil that the Bible speaks of, the thief. All right. The oppressor. Because that's why if you go into the book of Job, the ninth chapter and twenty fourth verse, it says the the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right. And covered the face of the judges. All right. And that's exactly what Esau has done, man, through by way of uh the Renaissance era. Icon, uh, they have a term called iconoclasm, which means a destruction of an image. That's why you see the, the depiction of our Lord today as a so-called white man, in which if you go into the scriptures, he's known as a, he, he would be known today as a so-called Negro, 
in which the tribe that it came out of was the tribe of Judah. And the tribe of Judah was uh, so, so-called so Negroes, man, a, a Negroid uh, a nation or a Negroid tribe, along with the other tribes of the nation of Israel. All right. Uh, it said, verse 17 says, See as thou hast instruction and cast my words behind thee. All right. Uh, so that's it on that. Uh, I want to jump to another precept. And I'm, I'll make this the last precept and I'm going to close it on out. It's uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, in the. Um, This uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, in the uh, 16th verse, it says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, right? And that blessing was to, as what you see, to, um, or actually when you read in the scriptures, the same blessing that Jacob got about uh, the promises stemming down to him. And that servants was going to be under Jacob. That same blessing was to go to uh, Esau, but he was rejected. All right. So um, Brina says, uh, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. See, so that repentance is, is according to the law, because the when you transgress the law, you commit sin. All right. So you have to find a place of repentance. And um, and Esau can't do that. But with that, you know, that pretty much wraps up the video. Uh, I got to go ahead and you know, head on out. Um, it's like you got business to take care of. But Lord's will, you members of the Hope you let, ratify about this video. And um, till next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shimei Hoshai, Rahab Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone.